Hello and welcome to the Linux Lads, the only podcast that makes you smarter and better looking. Isn't that right, Connor and Mike? That's exactly how it is. Yeah, I'm smarter and Mike's better looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I was, I was um, wondering which way I could... Either way, it was, it was going to be an insult. So, <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. Um, before we get into it, um, we're just going to... Uh, I, Connor, I've been hearing that you're not having a lot of sleep lately. Why is that? Um, I I, I signed up with a new job uh, recently, and they have me literally on the other side of the city in Dublin. So it's about a two-hour commute, um, because I'm relying on public transport. And many people have said to me, including people at work, "Do you not have a car?" And no, unfortunately, do not have a car, so I am relying on public transport. So it's a two-hour commute each way. Uh, means that I've caught up on a lot of uh, podcasts, <laughs> and also uh, on the way home, um, I've I've been taking advantage of the uh, Irish Rails free Wi-Fi and just opened up my work laptop, and it's like, okay, I'm just going to reply to a couple of emails that I forgot to reply to when I was in the office. So it's actually um, a bit of quote unquote work time for an hour yeah. what a, wor- a working commute <laughs> yeah those I, I don't see I cycle to work all the time now so I actually miss that a little bit that's the thing you don't get when you cycle to work you have to kind of you can't really be watching a YouTube video that <laughs> way <laughs> I'm sure some um, people do yeah yeah for sure some of them like nearly have a like a, a cinema screen like they have the, the phone on a holder on the handlebars and you can tell they're actually watching something and listening to it while they're cycling and it's like please no I, um, <laughs> I, I've, se- I've seen guys with like massive freaking Bose headphones going down and it's like I'm, I'm walking down the street as as they're whizzing past and saying there's no way you're you're able to hear anything with those massive black head- headphones on the side of you, uh, on like that can't be safe. Yeah, when you're cycling on the keys, like having noise cancelling headphones on your head is a really fucking bad idea. Um, anyway, Mike, you've got a new laptop, and you run Arch. Uh, no, actually, because I just got a new Entrover uh, Kratos, and I had it for the total of about eight hours so i haven't had the chance to install anything on it it came with ubuntu 1804 that's what i'm using also i was interested in uh, seeing if uh, if it's going to work out if the with the audio that i keep on moaning about is going to work out of uh, the box as uh, i think Stuart langry said it should in the on the first talk live and it seems to have worked perfectly. I, I literally just plugged everything in and uh, all I needed to do was to select the headphones for the output because it was automatically sending signal into the box, uh, into the a little Behringer box and uh, everything works fine. So yeah, otherwise the machine is amazing so far and I might uh, have a review next time uh, after I've used it for a while. By the way, I believe it's pronounced Kratos. Just say, just say. I don't think so. It's a Greek or some. Yeah, it's a Greek war god of war or something. So I'm sure it's Kratos originally. It's Kratos in God of War. In the yeah, video it game. is. Oh, there's a video <laughs> game. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's like yeah, but I I would pronounce it Kratos because I don't know because I'm better than you. I don't know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a learned man. I should say Kratos from now on. <laughs> Yeah, Entroware laptops are very sexy. Um, I have to. I wish I had the money to get a new one, but like the the, the stupid Apollo still works, so I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Apollo. It's just it's stupid for not working because it, I don't. I don't get a new one. Um, <laughs> God damn you, reliability! <laughs> and anyway, moving swift swiftly on, segueing all all the way till the end of the episode. Uh, I have been trying to get my um, Raspberry Pi 4 powered mobile Wi-Fi hotspot. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, the, as, as, as I don't know who, who knows this, but uh, well, us three do, I guess. <laughs> We're going to be at Dublin Maker in July 20th um, with the Dublin Linux community. So we have no Wi-Fi in the tent. So my idea was to get a, a, a mobile data dongle from Vodafone or some shit. And... Uh, pop it into a Raspberry Pi and use the onboard Wi-Fi so it can be used as an access point. Um, and I plan to use like a full fat 
uh, wireless router. Um, and great story. I went into Laptop Lab on Georgia Street just on the chance they had a network switch that I needed. And because, uh, you know, you could have the option of wired and wireless. And uh, I explained what I was doing to the guy and he was super enthusiastic. And he actually went downstairs and got me a wireless router and a network switch, uh, just a small one, like a small cheap one. But still, he just gave them to me for free. Wow. So he said they're just old shit That's down awesome. in the basement. like. And wow. yeah, exactly. Fantastic. It was so cool. And he gave me the business card. And it, yeah, so big shout out to um, Laptop Lab on Georgia Street. Back from the Future, I think, is also the name of the, the shop. You've probably oh, seen it. Oh, I know the place. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very good yeah. place. They've helped me out in the past. But your man well. was so totally into the idea. He was, he was uh, very on board. And yeah, so big shout out to them. Left them a Google review and everything. And, you know, good on them. Um, but uh, the unfortunate thing was about the router was that it's actually a, a, an ADSL router. So it's kind of useless. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, the input signal has to come from a phone line. So ah, it's, uh, okay, yeah. yeah, so it's like the, oh, well, still, it was fun to play with. I, I managed to change it to change the SSID and change the password and everything through ethernet. It was, it was, it was fun. Yeah. So, uh, before we move on, um, let's get to down to business. Um, we have a coupon code for Azari VPN. Uh, that's a, a VPN provider based in Sweden. This code gets you 30% off their three months package, uh, so they're a security focused VPN provider based in Sweden. They operate servers in Europe and North America. Their servers are all owned and not rented. They're all installed on location by their engineers and running Debian Linux. They provide a WireGuard and open VPN option. Their client is GPL version two licensed and it's available on Linux, of course. They take all major payment methods, including crypto, and you don't even have to give them an email address. Uh, use the code LinuxLads when ordering. Make sure you click the green add code button to get the discount, and that's valid till 1st of January 2020. So, into the news. Um, first up, Pinebook Pro pre-orders to go live on the 25th of July. Um, so it's confirmed that the device will have privacy switches on the camera, Wi-Fi and microphone, well, Wi-Fi and microphone, I should hope. Uh, oh, no, sorry. The switches are on the Wi-Fi yeah. and the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will, it will also be equipped with a Wi-Fi uh, chip and my microphone, but it will be switchable. Yeah, that's great. I looked at the sentence and I was like, why are they saying Wi-Fi and microphone? That's <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, Mike, uh, I think you've been following this a bit. Uh, how does this look? It looks, looks pretty nice. Oh, it looks sweet. Uh, so we've been, uh, you know, uh, I think they started uh, uh, starting started per showing uh, the. Or they started talking about the Pinebook Pro uh, in the beginning of the year, and it's been a steady influx of uh, overwhelmingly good news from from Pine64 about the device. Uh, so we now know that it's going to. Uh, that it's uh, going to be a really nice portable laptop on par with uh, on par with Chromebooks, and that uh, it's going to ship with a Debian with Mate desktop environment, and uh, that it will have uh, other distros available uh, for at launch. Uh, so Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu Analog DE, I think that's called Lubuntu. And uh, potentially Manjaro and also Chromium OS, if uh, anybody really wants that uh, Chrome-like opinion, uh, but uh, more positive in the freedom dimension. So yeah, I can't wait. Uh, people who are already logged into the forum or forum users who were uh, registered before July the first will also uh, be bumped. Will have priority in the in the queue in the pre-order queue and will get some. Uh, free upgrade to 128 gigabytes EMMC. I think the default is actually 64. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what we have. There will be a link in the show notes to uh, Lukash's uh, uh, update uh, from uh, from yesterday or from today. And uh, there's a lot of detail about what's going on with the device. So that's something to look forward to. And at the time of this recording, we're well past the 1st of July, so there's no point in listening to this and going, oh shit, I want to get a 128. Uh, unfortunately, that's gone past. Um, but uh, if you have uh, read previously registered before the uh, 1st of July, you will uh, be able to avail of the uh, limited um, upgrade to 128 
um, gigabyte um, out of the box. I'm not even registered on the forum, shite. Uh, I, I <laughs> a vague recall of having registered on the forum, but I don't think I posted anything. So I don't know if it's registered on the forum and be active in the forum. If it's yeah, both, just... if, if it's both, then I'm hosed because I might lo- have like zero or one post count or something. <laughs> yeah, I just don't do forums anymore. I think it says registered, so that's uh, that's the, that's the letter of the law. So I I because I've, I'm definitely registered, but I don't think I've ever posted anything because. Yeah, I'm I'm useless at forums. Yes, yes, double the memory, double the fun. Um, More. Next up, um, we have some news about the Mint Box Three. Is re- well, the news is is that the Mint Box Three was released. Um, so I don't know if anyone knows about these. I have seen them. They're they're quite cool, but um, they, it's basically like a, a dedicated Linux Mint Box, as the name suggests. And uh, it's like a small form factor PC. Um, they're quite slick. Like I quite like them. Like I, I probably wouldn't ever buy one myself. But um, the, do you guys know anyone who has actually bought one of these things? No, no. Uh... <laughs> well, there you go. Um, it's like a steam machine, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it, well, it's it's a lot better spec than a steam machine. Um, just looking through the spec here, uh, uh, Core i5, six core, sixteen gigs of RAM. Uh, a 256 uh, Evo uh, SSD, um, and it seems to be that it, it is quite a bit pricey, but I think what you're paying for is the fact that it's a small um, form factor, and also, I don't know about this one, um, but previous ones um, were heavily reliant on passive cooling, so uh, it could be something silent that's right beside your monitors and... Um, so it those those two things could be what is um driving up the price a bit. Yeah, that thing's fairly bestial for the price, like. Well, I don't know. It's uh, more expensive than this uh, Kratos, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's not as well specced. If I'm yeah, if uh, as I'm looking at it, so you can get for less money. You can get a Linux laptop uh, with uh, with a graphics card, and uh, you don't have to buy an extra monitor for it either. But on the other hand, uh, if uh, if you really want like a PC that will that will fit behind your TV, like a media center PC, and uh, that will be decently specced and guaranteed to work with Linux Mint, and also probably help the project as well, then it's uh, this is the way to go. If it is indeed passive cooling or um, very close to passive cooling, as as the screenshot seem, uh, of of it seems to suggest, or the photo of it does seem to suggest, and previous Mint boxes did have that capability, then it, it, for some people it it could be definitely worth the premium. Um, um, for the you, you get very decent spec, but also that aspect of it as well for people. Uh, I wish wish we had that kind of money because uh, we are re- uh, recording and and of course if there's a fan going on in the background it's not the best so having something that's passively cooled especially passively cooled with a, a Core i5 in it is is quite compelling so I'd, I would imagine it would be quite compelling for a lot of creative people out there who who uh, do some kind of recording or maybe they just don't want the distracting sound of the of the fan if they're editing photographs or editing music or anything like that yeah it's it's a very it's a very compact device and yeah it's it, i can't really figure out how how they don't how the thing doesn't just glow orange and just melt through your desk <laughs> like those are those are fairly uh beefy specs for such a small machine but then again i haven't really built a pc for a year or two now so th- th- these things move fast so the specs could be could be kind of amateurish by today's standards how would i know uh no actually 16 gigabyte of ram is very decent yeah exactly like and yeah that's what i was thinking because my pc has i think it has 16 gigs of ram as well yeah so does but mine. that would that but i built that like about two years ago maybe longer and the more expensive one for the one for 200 2700 dollars with core i9 and gtx 1660 ti and 32 gigabytes of ram and a terabyte of SSD, that is a very well-specced machine. Like, uh, $2,700 might be a, a, a bit pricey, but 
in this form factor with this uh, this kind of this kind of specs that's that's that that's a good that's a good machine yeah yeah and i suppose it's nice to have some choice in terms of linux devices absolutely choice is always good i don't know if it was this specific um, manufacturer compulab but i believe uh linus tech tips um uh, released a video about something very similar like small form, uh, form factor very good spec and was um passively cooled as well and that one was also a bit of a premium but uh, like just as i said justified in many respects if you have that kind of money there you are getting some value add for your money as in the um the silence compactness and silence of the of the device um i don't think it was uh linus himself but it was it was released on the linus tech tips channel i think it was one of the camera guys or something like that or or one of the editors who was who's raving about the, um that device so uh it's something if it if it is indeed uh uh the same manufacturer maybe we could put that in the show notes as uh to give people an idea of what this looks like uh, of course that wasn't mm. only linux mint <laughs> Yeah, all that will be in the show notes if you want to drop uh, the price of a, an, a used car on that thing. <laughs> um, so uh, we, I think we should move on to the next bit of news. Um, we've got here 10 years of Zorn OS. Not not much news, just congratulations, Zorn OS. Yeah, 10 ab- years. Absolutely. Uh, they have been going from strength to strength. We have reviewed the, the uh, distribution last time, and I've, if I recall, we all kind of liked it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, I do. So I assume that uh, you know, here's to another at least ten years. Yeah, f- m- most certainly. Um, it, it's not something that probably I. It's just my own um, personal opinion. Uh, probably not something that I would run as my main operating system, but I've no problems whatsoever recommending it to people. Um, I, there's nothing that st- uh, stood out to me as being any way big or negative about it. So f- power to them. No problems recommending um, Zorn OS to people. Um, it's just personal preference. I just, um, I just prefer to, uh, for me, I prefer a bit more customization with the, the desktop environment. Um, but again, maybe I'm, I'm just not the target, um, audience for that, which is perfectly fine. So, uh, light news day today. So, um, I think we'll move on to our uh, discussion topic. Uh, what Linux apps do you depend on and why? So um, we all have that, I reckon, like where we distro hop and we install a new distro and then the first thing we install is XYZ and it doesn't feel like home until we have those apps. Um, Mike, we'll go to you first. What sort of uh, what sort of shit do you like to put on your computer? Oh, all sorts of shit, but uh, <laughs> like I, I've just had this experience today because I had to set up this laptop and... Uh, the one of the very first things that I put uh, that I make sure is on every laptop, and uh, that I make sure I have the right configuration files and plugins installed just the way I like it, is Vim the text editor. Now Vim is kind of a staple of the Linux desktop for many people. It started actually on the Amiga, believe it or not, in uh, back in ninety one. I Be- didn't know that. Yeah, no, I did it. I, I mean, thanks. Mm. Yeah, thanks Wikipedia. Really, uh, the the founder or the, the the main developer Bram Molinar basically saw a different editor and uh, improved upon it, uh, and uh, has been doing that ever since. So, uh, it's uh, for those who don't know what Vim is, it's uh, basically just a text editor that functions in uh, a GUI and on the command line. Uh, the way it works, you press, uh, you you or you move around in using just the just your keyboard. You don't need a mouse at all. It's very ergonomic. In uh, you know, it's uh, it's almost thirty years old, but it's really the way for me uh, is the most comfortable way of of uh, writing and uh, editing. Uh, so basically, it's the best editor in the universe. Uh, 
I, I know that there are some people with uh, a different opinion on the matter. You know, the people who promote their Emacs, Sublime Text, and VS Codes, and other uh, bad life choices. <laughs> I've, I, I've, yeah, I mean, I've tried all of these. No, no. I, I've tried all of these, but um, well, many code. of these, yes, yes, uh, that's uh, that's that one's fun, uh, and um, I've uh, I found that they never function exactly like Vim does, uh, so that just means that they are inferior, and if they did function exactly like Vim does, then they would be redundant. So I mean, what's the point? The the, the only point of all these other editors is to expose and illuminate the brilliance of of Vim. Uh, I mean, I'm not by no means an expert on uh, on Vim or an, even an intermediate, uh, but Vim ensures that I have constantly something something new to learn. Uh, even though I've been using it for some time now, I've, and I'm talking like five years plus, I uh, it still happens that I take some action and something unexpected happens. Uh, I, would, I think people would be annoyed by that, but I really don't mind because it helps me understand uh, how people who voted leave feel now. <laughs> That's a very, very tenuous connection. Yeah, I know, but uh, it, it, it is there. It comes from straight from my heart, you know. That's why I have to mention it. It's not like I'm bolting Brexit onto an unrelated topic or anything. Mike, um, just as you were talking there about the, the history of Vim, um, uh, I, I, I don't know anything about it, so I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, you'd be able to pro- provide a bit of insight into it. Uh, what Didn't it start off as VI and then it eventually became Vim? So uh, VI, VI was a different editor. Oh, I think uh, Vim stands for, or originally, according to Wikipedia, Vim stood for uh, VI. Uh, let me let me pull it up. VI improved. Uh, it? No, yeah. there's the second stage. So it originally started as uh, uh, VI mimicked or VI. I can't. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, looking at the word now. So uh, <laughs> history. So. Uh, it, he based it on something that was for Atari. He he made it on the Amiga, and uh, yeah, he 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 named it as V imitation, and then oh. when it surpassed V, uh, it's V improved. In fact, in, I think in many modern Linux distributions, if you start typing VI, you actually get Vim because uh, I think some time ago I uh, inadvertently uh, had to use VI for whatever, and it was. Just different enough to be very uncomfortable because you felt like it was like you are. It was like moving around in your apartment after dark, but then you start <laughs> bumping in your, into things and you're realizing that you are in an apartment that you are in your apartment, but somebody's moved the furniture. Mike so, has some very strong feelings on text editors. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, well, that's just. I know it's a Linux podcast, and yeah, that's kind of par for course, but. Well, I'm, you see, I'm taken aback. Yeah, well, Vim is a perfection expressed in C, so uh, it, I have to, I have to put it, I have to. You're being a bit position. ambiguous with your opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling me that I should go stronger? Like, <laughs> go in Tell us how you really feel, okay. Mike. Yeah, I, I, okay, I won't hold back then. So, <laughs> un- unlike unlike other editors, <clears throat> Emacs. Uh, Vim doesn't require any bone breaking combos, you know, like Control Meta Alt to. Uh, anything you just i i actually have experience with that myself like in college uh in one of our lectures um the the lecturer actually made us use emacs oh dear i i didn't i didn't like it but but i didn't i don't like vim either like i don't like them to be that complex like i don't i don't require that level of complexity well maybe one day you'll see the light uh i mean (laughs) you know i i I like vim because it's very comfortable and i don't need to uh move some rodent around my table i just keep my fingers on the home row and only move them as per required it like i have spewed my laziness uh it's i'm happy to have like a 70 30 split between keyboard and mouse respectively that's too much of a. That's too much. That's too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> like I, you know, you have to move your hand too far ahead, too far away, um, and you know. So, so the way Vim works when you when you basically just keep your fingers on the home row and only moving them down and around is extremely addictive, which is a plus because I really like drugs, and uh, <laughs> uh, 
once you start using Vim, you, Vim, you will require the shortcuts uh, to work everywhere. So there's a lot of browser ex there's a lot of browser extensions for Firefox and lesser browsers that provide Vim functionality. There are Vim key bindings for editors and ADEs like PyCharm and VS Code, although they are never up to the standard of Vim. Uh, and there are programs like Qt Browser and Visidata that are built around the Vim, Vim way of doing things. So starting using these programs after you've used Vim, it feels like putting on an old pair of slippers, very comfortable. Uh, it works the same when you are SSH in or when you are in the graphical user interface. There are a million of plugins and configuration options, but they are all in one text file, the options. So you, you basically just carry the file around. If you need to reinstall, you just... Uh, install them and you take the file, put it there, and uh, everything is extremely easy. It's not like oh, is is that like a, a your your dot bash rc file? Yeah, it's actually called dot vim rc. Uh, oh yeah, of course. So so it's it's it's, it's it's you just you just have there. I'm sure people have like vim vim rc is the length of uh, good books because uh, as you collect modifications and settings throughout your life, it's. Uh, it just uh, piles up, but uh, it's it's written in a in a way that it's extremely easy to uh, uh, to start working with. Uh, I I knew a guy in college actually who who was uh, very into Emacs. He was your level of enthusiastic about Vim, but for v, but for Emacs. Oh, wow. and I think I really really would like to get you and him in the same room. <laughs> yeah, well, I I I think we would get along. You know, I mean, I I'm I'm saying all these things because I think it's funny, but I don't actually uh, mind uh, Emacs users, and some of my best friends don't mind Emacs users either. And uh, they just don't want to be living too near them. Like, <laughs> no, it's it's it's. Uh, they could be in their own neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it, it's it's not tabs and spaces all over again. It's <laughs> oh well, I have a very strong opinion on that as well. <laughs> I actually do as well. It's tabs. The correct answer is fucking tabs. No, it's not. It's four <laughs> spaces for everything. <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, I mean, are you are you just trying to trigger me now? This is trolling. Uh, yeah, anyway, basically, Wim, just to sum it up, up yeah, Wim... Uh, I'm also in the tabs camp. Oh, my God, you guys are wrong. Uh, basically, Wim celebrates something inherent to Linux, and that's interacting with a computer from the keyboard. And uh, this is something that Linux does much better than Windows and or the Mac. And uh, I think... Uh, we should play to Linux's strength and propagate the use of text interfaces, interfaces, and Vim is a massive part of it. I mean, I have Vim key bindings on my SSH, so pretty much whatever I do on the keyboard is uh, is in Vim Vim shortcuts. And I think uh, Vim has been around around for a long, long time, and I think it's gonna stay because uh, for many people this is the ultimate. Uh, and ultimately comfortable uh, way of interacting with a computer. That's uh, bananas. That's crazy. How much you talked about that? <laughs> uh, um, no, I'm, re I'm really glad that um, Mike Mike um, chose this and Mike is talking about it because it it does show his his passion and you can you can tell that Mike is, is very passionate about um, Vim and that's oh yeah, it's, expressing it's his. I know. No, I'm not being facetious. I'm like this. Genuine is, is great uh, listening to you. It's just. It's it's not it's not something that uh, is for me at, at all really. Um, for me, the command line is just another tool. As in, I will do my updates in the command line. Right, grant my updates are d are down now. I'm back on on Netflix watching Stranger Things or whatever it is. <laughs> um, as in, okay, the co very compartmentalized. As in, the uh, the command line is there for its its thing. Whether it's installing software, doing updates. Uh, anything like that. I don't live in the command line. It's the uh, command line is brought up when I need it and then uh, minimized or or xed out of when I don't need it anymore. And then I'm on YouTube or I'm playing video games or d d using my computer how I want to use my computer. So, um, but uh, I, I, each their own. Um, I know a lot of people are, are very um, passionate about their uh, text editors. Uh, Mike is included, and uh, genuinely, <laughs> I was why. I was, no, but well, <laughs> Mike is included. I wonder why. But no, it's it's um no, I'm, I'm being genuine here. Is it's 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 
great to hear people um, express their opinions and I learned a, a, a lot more about Vim than I th- um, was expecting to on, um, on this podcast. So, certainly. Yeah, for sure. Me, me too. It's like, yeah, we got a, a Vim evangelism session, whatever. I don't know, the Church of Vim right there. Um, I don't know. I, I don't... Because you see, for this discussion, there's a whole raft of things I install um, uh, within the first day, usually. Um, but they're they're not all programs like I have an innate kind of love for, or like they're not programs that I use constantly and have a, a deep knowledge about. It's just programs that I like to have there because I like to dabble with them from time to time, and uh, and I just kind of gradually expand my knowledge on them. But like when I first G parted, actually that's not included in what I was just talking about. <laughs> G parted is something I put on straight away because. Um, surprisingly, it's not always included in some distros by default, um, which I always find quite strange. Uh, that could that could have changed recently. Depends on the distro, but G parted is always quite essential for me. Um, but then you get into other stuff like Audacity, GIMP, Blender, Godot Game Engine, Inkscape, all those kind of uh, creative apps. I I think that's a real strength of Linux nowadays on the desktop, especially. Um, like fancy UI Linux and not Mike's cold utilitarian oh, oh, oh. Linux <laughs> world. <laughs> um, I know, I know. Yeah, his, but his uh, 1984 um, text, text <laughs> terminals. I got, I got to say though, yeah, like you're, what Connor was saying, it is good to hear someone that into one program on Linux or one app on Linux because it's that's what it's all about. Like that's the philosophy, isn't it? It's like one thing that does one thing incredibly well. Um, so, you know, just make an app. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be flashy. It just has to, you know, it's like a formula one car, you know, it's it just without all the fancy shit on, on it. It's just, it doesn't look very good, but it's, you know, it, it's, it's high performance in its own little narrow uh, task. Also, um, Linux is what you make of it for, um, for, for Mike Linux is that, um, uh, single use as in, or like, uh, is, is in, entirely keyboard centric saying everything else is a distraction I, I like my my fingers on the home key home keys and anything that any um any application that i use uh, again uh, um, mike feel free to correct me if i'm misrepresenting your opinion but any any um application that i use is that is distracting me from getting back to that the efficiency of the of my fingers on the home home, home pace is is like you're kind of you're always looking for okay i'm using this application it's very useful but i would rather if if it was more optimized towards being um towards uh, being keyboard centric and maybe you're constantly on a journey to refine that and then ultimate your ultimate thing is that every um application that you use will be very efficient and will be bring your your um everything back to the those um keyboard commands uh and really if being really efficient from that point of view that is and that is what you make of linux and for me linux is is completely a separate thing which is perfectly fine because linux is what 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 you make of it yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah like i had that like the the creative bunch of tools that i find on linux are very good like having used their equivalent their you know their some of their paid equivalents it's uh, yeah, these these programs stand up, especially the the image programs and the graphics ones like uh, uh, GIMP, Blender. Well, Blender obviously that's like world class program, but like Inkscape as well is a f- very capable program. You can do lots of stuff on that that you would be be able to do also in like uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, so yeah, it's it's that, that those kind of those uh, those. Uh, it, apps that you see in almost every distro are there for a reason because they're just good like and, and it's i'm always trying to like sell linux to people for this purpose so that's my kind of modus operandi is basically look you can have all this like great software f- like wh- you could even install it on windows if you wanted to and many of them have a mac in- installation i assume vim is a uh, vim sorry gimp is a great program uh no but like, don't you find that the name is just holding you back? Yes. There was a discussion on Twitter just today. Somebody said, we need to rename it. It's offensive to people. And yeah, I, I don't know. I think it should just be called something else. 
it should be like even imp would be better <laughs> yeah, like <it's> true. <laughs> like yeah like with two eyes or something yeah like it could still be a recursive acronym if it's i i m p you know imp imp image manipulation program or as as a beginning beginning to call it is actually gnu slash imp <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it should be called because it's very it's 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 very good. It should be called like uh, Photovim, maybe. Photovim. Yeah. Oh Jesus, Mike. Oh, by the way, I have to I have to object there. You said that Vim was ugly. I think it's actually it depends how you modify. No, it. utilitarian. It's, uh, it's... It can be very sparkly. There's there's plugins for everything. But anyway, back to your topic. So, you you, I think I do, I missed it, but you you can So you said uh, you said GIMP for or the GIMP for uh, image manipulation. Uh, what what's your favorite like video editor? Um, well, I've used Blender as a video editor before, oh which my isn't God. as is not as terrifying as it sounds. You must have a, enough. a head the size of a planet for that. I it don't it know. uses no. It's actually quite all right because it uses. Um, you only need about six or seven keyboard commands to do most things and then the rest of it is clicking like it's a bit of a learning curve all right but i i found this great i think i said this in like the first episode of this podcast ever but i found this great uh tutorial online by this guy called mikey cal i'm going to give him another shout out because his channel is excellent and he keeps renewing the tutorials every time there's a new version of blender so it he keeps refreshing it when the when everything changes which is amazing um, and he goes through a whole series of like like 12, 13 parts. I think it goes up to 20, some of these tutorials, 20 videos like of uh, just how to use Blender and how to use it as a video editor specifically. Because if you think about it, you have your compositing and your 3D modeling and all that stuff. But if you want to make a cinematic or an animation or anything, of course, you need a vid- video editor as well. So uh, I thoroughly recommend that channel. It's It's quite amazing. And that's how I learned to use it as a video editor. A lot of keyboard stuff, quite a lot of keyboard stuff. It's not very mousy, but, um, you know, if you're working on video editing and the timeline and everything, the mouse is kind of, it's pretty necessary. And what would you recommend for, like, you know, this is for you professionals, but what about us people who just want to make a really very short home porn movie? <laughs> uh, uh, sh- open shot. Shot or cut. Or shot shot cut, cut is good. Shot cut or open shot is pretty good as well. Yeah, I like shot cut. Kaden... KDN Live or KDEN Live is uh, is pretty good too, but in my experience, it's had some stability issues. On if you're not using it in KDE, um, I, I could be wrong. I, I believe there's a couple of new versions out since I've really used it, but uh, you know, it's fine. Like it's good. It's it's a good program. I definitely recommend it, but uh, results may vary. Um, Shane, just when you're you're talking about um, G parted, it just um, it kind of set off a, a nugget in, in my brain, and I was um, going to pivot into is G parted is actually available as a, a live um, USB image, I believe, based off Debian, which is freaking fucking fantastic if you're in any way in IT tech support as in yeah. there's 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 a machine and you want to quickly repartition the hard drive or something like that boot into this live USB image um and there I was actually um because obviously I'm, I'm new into my job so I'm still shadowing some people but um there was a guy imaging a, a PC and he was imaging a Windows PC and he was doing the usual thing of r- putting on freaking Microsoft Office because th- that's enterprise and that's what you do, blah, 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 blah. So he's going out through all of these applications and as part of the image that he was rolling out on whatever the, the 50 computers or whatever, part of it was uh, VLC. I went, oh, it's, I, I actually said it to, oh, that's, uh, that's not something you see every day that you're, as, as part of your, official snapshot image rollout that you're rolling out to these you're including VLC and he goes oh yeah VLC is this really good player and I went I was kind of in the back of my mind going trust me I know (laughs) (laughs) and uh, and also um, he was he was using um, 7-Zip 7-Zip is a fucking awesome program as well and both VLC and 7-Zip are open source well fairness I've definitely used 7-Zip in a a Windows office environment before there is no 7-Zip for Linux is there? It's it's P seven seven zip, uh, but um, 
Uh, I think if you want to install it as a separate package, but I believe the archiver um, on a lot of uh, Linux uh, Linux distributions... It can do pretty much everything that 7-Zip can do yeah. anyway. I don't know if it's yeah. based off 7-Zip, but they, it has native support for the uh, .7-Z f- uh, files, uh, the native um, archiver um, thing that's av- available, like GNOME Archiver or whatever it is that's inbuilt into a lot of uh, distributions has native support for all of those file types. So I don't, yeah. know, if, I don't know if it's implementing 7-Zip or is, can you download 7-Zip separately for Linux. Uh, I think P7-Zip is something... G-Zip like. actually reads them as well. Yeah. Or, or, and and uh, for for Windows, uh, I, I, I don't know if I could recommend anything other than 7-Zip because 7-Zip is so awesome, but um, if you want to get rid of the dreadful uh, WinZip, uh, there's one called P-Zip, P-E-A, as in the... the f- the uh, vegetable. Oh, I've seen that one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, why use any of those? Just freaking use 7-Zip on Windows. Yeah, I just for anything zipping zipping related on the command line in Linux, I, I would just use uh, tar or gzip or some, something. Uh, Tar-XF whatever it was, V. Which apparently uh, isn't X-S- even necessary. X-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-
fucking tastic, and I don't say that lightly. As in, uh, the you can run GameCube games uh, at depending on obviously depending on the spec of your computer, but um, uh, even a moderately spec uh, modern computer can well handle this. But you can run GameCube games and you can upscale them to 1080p. Um, Mo- that's uh, that's a bit like uh, the Game Boy Advance emulator. Yeah, that so, one's amazing. So yeah, uh, there's there's people who who go around and they play their their Zelda games and they rain they play their Super Super Smash Brothers and like Super Smash Brothers. Anyone who's ever played it, there's a lot of activity going on at the screen at the same time, and <laughs> yeah. and this runs smoothly upscaled to 1080p. So. Uh, yeah the emulators are actually something i hadn't thought about for sure um that that game boy advance one i can't remember the name but yeah uh the novelty of being able to being able to play uh pokemon leaf green on on a 1080p screen with an xbox controller is is quite nice this is pretty good i mean i'm i'm uh, it's three people and everybody has got a different view on the best corner of the of the linux ecosystem for them like so if if we and even if you put all of us free together, that doesn't cover the whole thing. There are so many different facets of Linux that uh, we that people are passionate about. I mean, uh, this is uh, th- and this. I think that to me is the most astonishing uh, thing about Linux is that the things that you can do with it, and the fact that it doesn't prevent you from doing anything, and uh, the fact that. This supports a community of people that you wouldn't find anywhere else. It's probably the best, and we, you know, that's something that definitely uh, astonishes me. And yeah, yeah, for sure. Like uh, this is actually a very interesting part of the whole Linux ecosystem is uh, finding out what people find useful. Um, distro agnostic, um, what it, what apps you find useful. So it's nice to talk about kind of the how you use Linux and what it's useful for. So. Um, if you're on Twitter at Linux Lads, let us know what you find invaluable, um, or email us at show at linuxlads.com, um, because we really, really do love the app suggestions. That's one of my favorite things about Linux. Anytime I'll be listening to a Linux podcast or reading an article, it's like I want to know what I want to know more apps. So, off the top of my head, uh, some of the emulators for the various platforms that I've used and that I enjoy. Um, for the uh, Super Nintendo, there were um, Zed SNES and uh, SNES 9X. Uh, N64 would um, is Project 64, which is for Windows only, but it runs very well under Wine. Uh, and I'd also um, Moopin 64 is an, uh, I believe is an open source version or is open source N64 emulator and that runs natively on, on Linux. Um, I've previously mentioned Dolphin for the, um, uh, GameCube and Wii. Um, PPSSPP is a absolutely fantastic PSP emulator. Um, this is a whole world of choice. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's, um, PlayStation 1 and 2, um, have pretty good emulators. The only thing is the, you have to, um, uh, the emulator won't be able to boot for whatever reason. The, um, the PlayStation operating system was written. The PlayStation emulator would not be able to boot just by itself. So you have to source, uh, legally, of course, um, a PlayStation BIOS uh, file that, and then the um, PlayStation emulator would boot. Um, so the PlayStation One and PlayStation Two in the works, but I believe it's quite buggy at the moment and it's not in any playable state. And as you you can well imagine, requires an absolute fucking p- amazingly powerful computer. They're they're actually working on a um, PlayStation Three emulator. Wow, they're like as as computers get better and better, it's like the less you need retro consoles. I know some people like to have the physical thing, but like it could kind of cut, you know kill some of that retro console market. But uh, you see, I don't think so because you have all these the the new Raspberry Pi that is out, that is just out, uh, or any of the Pine sixty four or the Odroid stuff that uh, that people have. Uh, 
The massive advantage of that is that it's something that you can buy for cheap and give it to the kids and that it doesn't make noise and it's easy to set up. You connect it to your telly. So I don't think that's going anywhere uh, anytime soon because you just you wouldn't give your 10 year old a super powerful workstation, but you can give him a 35, uh, 35 dollar computer. I mean, I grew up playing the PlayStation 2. In fact, my PlayStation 2 is still there and is literally, well, not quite within reach, but not too much further from my, from the reach of my arm is on, on the shelf just over there. And um, my original massive fat uh, PlayStation 2. Um, and on the I PlayStation, well, yeah. on the PlayStation 2 emulator, um, just because I, I want a better experience in playing the games rather than the shitty friggin' CRT uh, monitor that is, or a TV that's hooked up to my PlayStation 2. I can upscale and I can play them in 1080p. I can relive the games of my, of my childhood, of me being in secondary school, um, going home at the end of the evening and playing the video games, like the, all the Grand Theft Auto games, which I know are now, um, available in Steam, but some of the, uh, the PlayStation exclusives, uh, like Wipeout Fusion, I've played that in, the, in an emulator, uh, very, and, and of course the Metal Gear Solid series. Metal Gear Solid is, was literally my childhood, so going back and through the nostalgia trip of playing them on an emulator on my on my more modern PC in upscaled 1080p or whatever, that is that is what the the um, enjoyment is with all these emulators, and of course they run on Linux. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the the specializations we've had today. Like uh, Mike is more like efficiency workflow text editors. Connor's a bit more, uh, you know, gaming, old school kind of systems and consoles. And then I'm like more like RT40 or whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I really like it too. I mean, uh, obviously we all have uh, passions for something else, but this kind of thing when I, when I keep, obviously I was joking when I was saying that everybody else is wrong. Um, for those who didn't, uh, didn't understand. Oh, we know you weren't, Mike. Yeah, well. <laughs> Please don't send me emails. Uh, at least not not nice ones. Uh, Say, so I I this kind of thing keeps me grounded, knowing that uh, yeah, I might really think one way about using about using a computer, and for me, that's the one true way. But for other people, it's it's the exact opposite. You know, I know that Connor likes to uh, point and click, and this is probably how you are at your most efficient as well, because nobody on purpose would choose doing something in a in a way that would be that would be worse than they could do it right so people are uh, people don't choose the mouse because it it makes them less efficient people choose mouse because they are the most efficient using the mouse i think anyway if i say and uh, well yes. yeah there's two sides to that really because once i learn some keyboard shortcuts and i make the effort to learn them even if i don't like it initially i i always kind of uh, I always kind of like it then when I when I remember to use them afterwards. Yeah, but then then you kind of that that works for some people, but some other people don't. Uh, you know, for some for, for other people, and also, I mean, I I do point and click at some point, even though I have got even the right click mark to a keyboard keyboard shortcut, uh, Shift F10. If you ever try, it's amazing in many in many applications. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's 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 been really good to to hear you guys what what you what you like to use and uh, it kind of expands a person's universe to know that there are other ways and other things other programs uh, and uh, yeah and also hopefully you'll be using Vim very very soon. Um, I think we are coming up on the time, so shall we start to wrap this thing up? Um. So we'll go into the usuals. Um, obviously, if you want to catch up with us, uh, our Telegram group is fairly active, so you can get to that through linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. Uh, reach out to us on Twitter at linuxlads. Uh, Facebook, we're on facebook.com forward slash linuxlads forward slash linuxlads. Uh, Mastodon. Mike, what's the Mastodon? Uh At linuxlads. Yeah, you know what? I should know, but uh, it's going to be in the show notes. Cool. <laughs> It'll be in the show notes. Um <laughs> If you want to buy us a coffee or a sandwich or, you know, a coffee and a sandwich, which would be actually better if you could do that, um, linuxlads.com forward slash support for my coffee and sandwich. Um, <laughs> and and Connor's beer. 
Yeah. But no, actually get me two coffees and two sandwiches. Fuck him. Um, <laughs> uh, so, guys, been a great episode. I enjoyed sharing our sharing the app love. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, I've been Shane. I've been Gunner. And I've been Mike. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you.